And now the weather, sponsored by uh, the London School of Economics, with Professor Leonard Smith. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I am your weatherman. Here's the forecast for the UK for a week from Friday. You can see it's going to be a beautiful sunny day. No, it's going to be a cold and wintry day with winds coming in from the north. In fact, it's going to be a rainy day with warm winds coming in from the southwest. I think you'll find that in fact it will be clear and bright in the morning with snow. Perfect for surfing. Initially, Well, in fact, each of these forecasts form the forecast for the weather a week from Friday. We're used to being told just one weather forecast, a best guess forecast. Well, tonight, I'm going to argue why it's important to have more than just one. Confusing as it first seems, there's a huge value in having a collection of different, usually contradictory, forecasts about what's going to happen. If you were reading the Times in 1875, you would have seen this, the very first weather map by Sir Francis Galton. Today's ensemble weather forecasts give us a lot more to talk about. It was over 200 years ago that physicists identified the three things required to make a perfect forecast. Laplace created his demon to have each of these three things. First, perfect observations. The demon is able to know exactly the elements of the weather now. Second, perfect knowledge of the laws of physics, if such things exist. Third, unlimited computer power. The demon can apply the laws of physics to the observations and see what the future holds with no mathematical error. Let's start with the first requirement, perfect observations. Even in the best scenario, differences remain between what we are able to observe and the reality we're trying to measure. As we base our forecast on these observations, and since our best models of reality are nonlinear, even the tiniest differences can get amplified as we forecast these elements into the future. Sometimes the sensitivity to initial conditions is extreme and the bigger the differences get, the faster they grow apart still. That is called chaos. Here's a simpler case. Imagine two planes flying from London to Edinburgh, but there's a very slight difference in their initial trajectories as they take off from London. After several hundred miles, that small difference could mean that one plane lands in Edinburgh, as desired, while the other ends up in Glasgow, or even in Norway. But we're missing more than just the exact initial condition. We don't really know the laws of physics, and computers don't do perfect mathematics. Sometimes our model can't quite match the behavior of reality even after it's happened. And our forecasts have gone wrong not because we didn't know where to start, but because reality went somewhere our best models just can't reach. Given that first, we don't have perfect observations of what the weather is today, and second, that we don't have perfect models to take those observations forward into the future, perhaps it's not so surprising that our best guess forecast goes wrong, and that sometimes even the full diversity of our ensemble of models fail to reflect what's coming at us. But our work at the LSE hasn't been to say it's all hopeless. Let's imagine an ensemble forecast for a week from Friday. We might have half the simulations indicating cold and icy, and the other half indicating crisp and clear where they might almost all indicate crisp and clear, with just one or two suggesting cold and icy. What these ensembles are really telling us is that the weather a week from Friday is very uncertain and could go in one of a variety of directions. And this information is vital and valuable. Predicting the weather is a lot like playing roulette in a casino. You have many options before you, but only one will materialize. At the LSE's Center for the Analysis of Time Series, CATS, we've learned how to play weather roulette in smarter, safer, more profitable ways. No collection of model runs will tell you what the weather will be a week from Friday. But we can help you get better odds on which particular scenario will materialize. We don't know in which square the roulette ball is actually going to land. But knowing in which quarter of the wheel it will land is extremely valuable. Even if you're wrong, just under half the time. The main lesson from weather roulette is that you don't want just one best guess forecast. You want lots of good forecasts. P. 
People in several sectors across the economy now use modern ensemble forecasting more effectively. This allows them to make more informed decisions. That is our impact. Should I take a generating plant down for maintenance now, or keep it running another week, as there may be another coal snap? Should I keep this reserve of natural gas, or am I confident I'm not going to need it next week? Is it safer to do maintenance on an offshore platform this week, or next week? Can I count on wind energy or solar power being available or not? Should I stock up on soup or ice cream? EDF uses this weather information in the UK, not only for trading and in risk management, but also in electricity demand planning and in generation planning. I personally used ensemble forecasts in deciding where to go in order to see the solar eclipse of 1999. Days before, Tim Palmer and I headed to France rather than Cornwall and were rewarded with a spectacular review. The range of applications of our work goes far beyond weather forecasting. Economists, bankers, traders, distribution specialists, anyone who uses forecasts of any kind regularly can adopt our approach. The basic ideas have wide applicability. The big lesson here is that we've learned how to face our demons. We can translate imperfect observations and imperfect understanding into actionable decisions and over time, better outcomes. There's deep value in understanding diversity. It can help save money, resources, sometimes even lives. Mm -hmm.